Hello everyone, we are from AR Finance and today we are going to discuss about the market leader of steel industry which is Tata Steel. The key points for our discussion are introduction, merger and acquisition, business line and revenue mix, market share, shareholding pattern, investor view, financials, ratio analysis and summary. So let's start with the introduction. Tata Iron and Steel company Tisco was founded by Jamshedji Tata and established by Durabji Tata on 26th of August 1907. Tisco started as pig iron production in 1911 and began producing steel in 1912 as a branch of Jamshedji's Tata group. The company changed its name from Tisco to Tata Steel Limited in 2005 and became Asia's first integrated private steel company. It was on BSC listing on 1st of January 1939 and NSC listing on 18th of November 1998. They have manufacturing units in Jamshedpur, Kalinganagar and Dhenkanal. The company's core business is producing steel, which consists products like long products and auto grade steel. Long products consists of wire, rod, steel bars, railway tracks, etc. Auto-grade steel is used in making cars like car body, panels, doors, trunk, etc. They supply majorly to auto industries like Honda, Bajaj Auto, Mahindra and & Mahindra and many other leading players. Tata Steel won the world's most ethical company award in 2021 by Ethisphere Institute for the 10th time and it ranks 14th amongst the top 25 global brands in mining, iron and steel. Now let us learn about the mergers and acquisitions. Tata acquired Chorus on 2nd of April 2007 for a price of $12 billion, which made this Indian company the world's sixth largest producer of steel and marked a global presence. Chorus is a Europe-based steel manufacturing company with the sales of 18.6 million tons. Tata Steel agreed to acquire the steel making operations of the Singapore based Nat Steel for $486.4 million in cash on August 2004. Nat Steel had a turnover of $1.4 billion and a profit before tax of $47 million in 2003. It had a capacity of 2 million tons per annum of finished steel. Tata Steel acquired a majority stake in the Thailand-based steel maker company named Millennium Steel for a total cost of $130 million. For the year 2004, Millennium Steel had revenues of $406 million US dollars and a profit after tax of $29 million US dollars. At the time of acquisition, Millennium Steel was the largest steel company in Thailand with a capacity of 1.7 million metric tons per annum, producing long products for construction and engineering steel for auto industries. It has 68% shares in the acquired company. Tata Steel acquired Bhushan Steel for Rs 32,500 crores in 2018. Tata Steel won the bid to acquire debt-laden Bhushan Steel under the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. Tata Steel acquired Engineering and Vinau Steel in 2007. Tata Steel, through its wholly owned Singapore subsidiary Nat Steel Asia, acquired controlling stake in both rolling mill companies located in Vietnam. Structure Steel Engineering 100% stake and Vinau Steel 70% stake. The enterprise value for the acquisition was $41 million with this acquisition. Tata Steel got hold of two rolling mills a 250,000 tons per year bar and wire rod mill operated by SSE Steel and a 180,000 tons per year reinforcing bar mill operated by Vinau Steel. Investment of Tata in Metallics Tata Steel increased their stake in Tata Metallics from 55.06% to 60.03% by acquired 34,92,500 equity shares of Rs 10 each of metallics. The total amount utilized for deal was Rs 224.22 crores. Business line and revenue mix of Tata. 
The company's core business is producing steel, which is used by different categories like automobiles, industrial and general engineering, construction and agriculture. Tata Steel's revenue of 37% comes from industrial products, 31% from branded retail, 12% from automotive, 12% from exports and 8% from transfers. If we look at location-wise revenue, majorly revenue comes from India, which is 81.1%, 16.1% from Asia, 1.8% from Europe and from the rest of the world, 1.1%. The company has operations in more than 100 countries, spread across six continents and over 6,60,800 employees worldwide, touching lives in every walk of life. Market Share of Tata The company holds 50% market share for appliance maker and 55% in hardened and tempered, which is used by automobile industry. Shareholding Pattern at Tata If we look at shareholding pattern of Tata Steel, Promoters of Tata Steel Sun Private Limited hold the majority stake of 32.929%. The FII's holding is 18.56%. The DI holding is 25.16%, in which Life Insurance Corporation holds a majority stake of 8.86%, and with public is 21.87%. Investor view about Tata. The stock has given the return of 323.91% in 5 years time and the stock is performing excellent in the stock market. If we look at 1 year return, the stock has given a return of 259.43% going to the lowest price in lockdown and making a great recovery and achieving an all time high share price of Rs 1192. Dividend the company is paying dividend to investors on a regular basis, which is a good sign for the investor. If we look at the financial year 2020-21, the dividend paid is Rs 25, which is the highest amongst four years. If we look at the financials of Tata Steel, despite challenging market conditions in which India's GDP contracted by 7.7% in the financial year 2020-21, Deliveries at Tata Steel India increased by 2%. Over financial year 2019-2020 enabled a seamless shift to exports in the first half of the year. Increase in turnover. The turnover during the current period was 64,869 crores higher by 7% over previous year, primarily due to increase in steel prices while the deliveries were at par. Increase in EBITDA. The EBITDA during the current period was 21,952 crores, higher by 45% over previous year due to increase in steel prices and lower input cost mainly in imported coal. Capital expenditure of Tata The capital expenditure was 2,122 crores, lower by 55% than the previous year, primarily to conserve the cash for liquidity during the pandemic. The sales of Tata Steel has been increasing at a good rate, but if we look at the profit after tax, it has increased by 381% compared to financial year 2019-2020. Company debt is on higher side, which is Rs 72,408.79 crores and the interest payable is Rs 7,606.71 crores. The company is paying 25% of operating profit in paying the interest. Ratio Analysis Net Profit Margin The company's net profit margin is very low. If we compare with JSW Steel, the net profit is 9.6% for financial year 2020-21, which is decent. EPS EPS for Tata Steel is 62.73, which is very good compared to JSW Steel, which is 32.83. And now, the summary. If we summarize everything we just studied, the company's future is bright as the demand for Tata Steel is increasing. The stock has given a return of more than 323% in 5 years and 271% in 1 year, along with regular dividend every year. Do let us know your comments on this topic and how this information has benefited you. Please wait up for our next video and do not forget to like and subscribe. See you soon.